This is Mike Roth. Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages podcast. In this show, we're going to talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs, and interesting folks who live here in the villages to give perspective of what's happening here in the villages and information that I think all villagers should have. We hope to add a new episode every Friday morning at 9 o'clock. This is Mike Roth. I'm here today with Don Wiley, who is now a commissioner for Sumter County and running to reclaim the seat for the next election cycle. That about, that about sum it up fairly, Don? That's, that's pretty accurate. Yes, Mike. Good. And before we start the show, we always like to start the show with a joke. Here's one. Why did the teacher have a sack full of bird seed? Why do I want, not want to know? It was for a parrot teacher conference. I knew I didn't want to know. Okay. So, since we talked last on, you were appointed by the governor to the vacant seat on the Sumter County Commission. Do you think that has been is going to be a help for you in the election in August? I think for some it'll be a help, but for others uh, that have a, a bias to, against pretty much anything in the villages, they're just going to see me as another developer's puppet, which I'm definitely not. Okay. And on the ballot in August, you're going to be running against one other candidate? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mizelikowski, I I apologize if I mispronounced his name. And if you could, for our listeners, can you contrast your position and background to his? Well, uh, I have been a Republican all my adult life. Obviously, before my adult life, I didn't know what I was. Mr. Mizelikowski, records show that he was a Democrat prior to coming here to the villages. Mm -hmm. Uh, Why he changed his party? Affiliation is beyond me. Obviously, a, a Democrat might have a hard time winning here in Sumter County. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same scenario played out two years ago when we had a previous election. Mr. Mislikowski bills himself as a fiscal conservative. I'm not sure how he categorizes that. I mean, everything I've heard him say is basically, uh, I think we should live not with, we should live within our means. Well, okay, so. Anybody then can be a fiscal conservative if that's their their definition. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot more to being a conservative though than than uh, just a few words. Right, right. And you know, here in the villages, I'm going to ask you a question about this PWAC that's trying to form south of Route 44, and Route District 7 is holding out to stop it from happening. I know you used to be a chairperson of that commission, Project-Wide Advisory Committee. What is the issue really all about for our listeners in in a nutshell? Well, um, I guess there are several issues. Well, I guess there are probably several issues that uh, District 7 uh, appears to have. I'm not sure I understand their position fully. All the other districts agreed to a new contract that would give a lot more consolidation of of responsibilities to the project-wide advisory committee, uh, and it would also separate the state route, uh, the the districts south of State Route 44, from those north of State Route 44. One of their big complaints is that the commercial districts don't pay enough. They only the commercial districts pay about three to three and a half percent of the total budget that is, makes up the project-wide budget. They also only represent about 70 acres. Mm-hmm. Our district, District uh, 10. 10, is about 1,500 acres. The other districts are close in size, and some are smaller. Down south of uh, State Route 44, they're much larger. District 12 is about 1,600 acres, and when completed, District 13 will be about 2,500 acres. Uh, so the, the, the commercial districts represent a very small percentage of of the total number of acres. Mm-hmm. And you got to look at what the project wide agreement is doing. In a nutshell, it's cutting the grass mm-hmm. and keeping the retention ponds repaired mm-hmm. and taking care of some other infrastructure. There's a very small portion of that 
in the commercial district. What would other infrastructure be? The pumping stations for the retention ponds. Mm. There are some things like, well, obviously the big thing that's come into play is the, the town square in Brownwood and the, the two uh, ornamental objects that were taken down, a windmill and a water tower. Mm -hmm. Those fall under the project-wide agreement, very similar to Lake Sumter Landing's town square. So again, there's not a whole lot of stuff there. People re don't realize that things like uh, a retention pond, for example, the retention pond over in District 11 behind the Moyer Loop or behind the Moyer Recreation Center mm -hmm. cost about a half a million dollars to repair. Oh, that was that uh, little sinkhole. That, that was that sinkhole over there by Escambia and uh, Okahunka, not Okahunka, Okeechobee. Mm -hmm golf course. So how did that get paid for? Well, every district paid their portion of it. District 10, our district, paid about 15% of it. District 11, mm -hmm. I think, paid about 8% of it. And it was based on acreage. And the rest of it was spread out around all the other districts south of State Route 466. So why would it be a good thing to have the management of the appearance items in the villages split into the two different uh, project-wide advisory committees. So it's already difficult enough to get a unanimous decision on just about anything. Right now, District 12 and 13 have recently been added, or District 12 has been added. 13 will soon be added after this election. Um, 14 is not far from coming online. That's the area in Lake County. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 will be down by Middleton and, and so on. So the group is getting bigger and bigger. They start with District 5 and you know, so we got, what, 10 members or something like that. So the first part is, obviously, it becomes very difficult to manage. The second is... All decisions have to be made unanimously to spend money? No, not unanimously. It definitely lengthens any discussion when you have, you know, 10 or 12 people instead of 7 or 8. It, when we talk about contract changes in the project-wide agreement, that has to be a unanimous uh, decision. That's part of what happened with uh, District 7. They didn't agree with the decision that was... The, the, the changes in the contract. Also, south of State Route 44, there are some significant differences in the way the landscaping is done, uh, the way uh, the, the whole property is laid out. D Districts 12 and 13 are much more spread out. They have a lot more open areas, a lot more wetlands. So they have a different cost structure. And it doesn't make sense to keep them combined. Between the, the open areas, the difference in fencing, there's there's dozens of differences, and part of it is really uh, the next generation of the developers' family. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a, a much more ecologically friendly attitude. They wanted to keep more wetlands. You look north of uh, 44. If you see a green space, it's probably a golf course. Down there, there's green spaces everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know that lends itself to a different cost structure. I mean, even their grass is different that they that they plant. The grasses up here need to be cut every week. Mm -hmm. Down there, they're designed to be cut every three weeks or thereabouts. So, again, uh, just there's so many differences. There's actually a video on the district website that shows some of the architectural differences between the two areas that makes that that help make up the difference uh, for for why we're we're looking at having to split the PWAC. It was my understanding from just from reading the newspaper that splitting the districts north and south will result in lower costs of the existing districts above forty four. So yeah, that's um, that that is something that came out when the district staff started doing the an the analysis of what's going on. Basically, most of the districts would save between one hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars north of forty four, just because of the way the cost out allocations occur. South, they're going to see an increase in their, their project-wide fees when this splits. That could very well you know, railroad the whole thing also. District 12 or 13 may say, may say you know what, we don't want to pay, pay higher rates. Uh, and they could be the next one to vote it down. However, the last time we voted on it, back in, I want to say it was September, District 12, they said yes, they wanted, they wanted to be separated. And it, and it still does make sense there's just so many differences between the areas, and again, it, it be, it's become it's starting to become unwielding with the big size that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, it seemed to me that south of 44, it's all 
the city of Wildwood. Yeah. yeah. South of 44 is all Wildwood, as well as uh, Antrim Dells, Alden Bungalows, and Atwood Villas, and Brownwood. They're all in uh, Wildwood. Mm -hmm. Don, in the upcoming election, could you remind our listeners about what the voting rules are for county commissioners. There's, there's how many commissioners up for election this time? There are four of us up for election. Uh, two four of, out of the five. Correct. It should only be two. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of uh, some uh, activities that were not exactly legal, uh, two of the uh, commissioners were removed from office by the governor. They were suspended. One has since resigned. The other has a trial coming up. Uh, so because those seats are, were basically emptied, they need to be uh, run for election again for the remaining of the term. The governor appointed um, Diane Spencer and Roberta Ulrich back in March for medical reasons. Uh, Diane stepped down shortly thereafter. And last month, the governor appointed me to take the place of uh, Ms. Spencer. Uh, so, so if you were elected, you wouldn't serve a full term. No, I would. I would. I would serve out the term of this seat, which would be for another two years. So you'd have to stand for election in two years. And two years again. Yes, I'm just so looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's you, not me. Yeah. So, in the election, there will be four spots in the Sumter County Commission that everyone who votes can vote on a commissioner. That is correct. They can vote for all four spots. That is correct. Because of the Sumter One initiative that was that came about twenty years ago, all of the represented all the county commissioners are elected at large from throughout the county, which is good because that means they have to represent and listen to the people, all the people in Sumter County. Uh, if if it was if they had reversed Sumter One, then the only people I would really have to listen to are those people here in the villages basically from 44 to a little bit north of uh, 466A. But that's not the case. I, I have to listen to, I have to uh, win the favor, if you will, of, of all the residents of Sumter County, just like the other commissioners. Good. Why don't you tell our listeners why they should vote for Don Wiley? Why they should vote for Don Wiley? Well, <laughs> uh, I've got quite a bit of experience uh, here in Sumter County. I, I was a uh, district supervisor for seven and a half years. Uh, I am very analytical. Uh, I look at just the facts. It's just the way I, I've been doing my entire life between operating a nuclear reactor and working with construction contracts. It's just about facts. To me, uh, I don't let my own personal opinions mm -hmm. uh, sway my, uh, my choices. I have to listen to all 130,000 residents here in the county, as, as well as having to look at just the facts. Uh, my opinion counts one one hundred and thirty thousandth of my decision process. Mm -hmm. So, even though I may I may like something, it's what's good for the county, and and that's the position I take towards things. Uh, you know, Sumter County is one county. There is some divide between people in the villages and outside the villages, which is sad because I mean it's a beautiful county. There's a lot to see and do, but people tend to stay separated, unfortunately. Uh, the other thing is, the county what is, is the split in terms of population. How much of the hundred and thirty thousand is in the villages, and how much is outside the villages? I don't know the exact number, but it's about a seventy thirty split, maybe a little more on more on the villager side. Seventy percent of the Sumter County residents are in the villages. That is correct. Um, it could be as high as eighty. I, I haven't looked at the numbers. I, I I've got to go talk with the uh, property appraiser and the the. Uh, uh, supervisor of elections to really figure out those numbers. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the uh, the other thing is, it's not just about the people, mm -hmm. okay? We got a lot of noise going on right now saying, oh, you know, you got to listen to the residents, got to listen to the residents. Yes, you do. But the businesses are a key part of the economy of Sumter County. And as a county commissioner, I've got to listen to not only the residents, but the businesses, all the businesses. Because if we, if we drop a poison pill like they tried to do a year and a half ago with these impact fees, it's going to drive businesses away. Everybody wants new restaurants, new, this store and that store. But if we poison the business environment, they're not going to come. 
and it's not going to make it a good a good place for us to be because we got to go travel so far away. And just like if we if we uh, favor the businesses too much, then it's not a good place to live for us because our taxes become too high. Mm-hmm. So there ha- there has to be a balance, and that's that's where I sit. I mean, I'm, I'm a small business owner. Mm-hmm. I understand how businesses work. Uh, I've, I've worked with big businesses, so I, ha- I have a pretty good, fi- good, pretty good working knowledge on on how things work. Uh, I understand the Florida laws, so I think I'm a good choice. Good. Are there any lawyers running for the Sumter County Commission? For the Sumter County Commission? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Uh, there's one running for uh, one of the state representatives positions, but uh, not for the, the county commission. Good. Can we talk for a moment about endorsements? I, I, officially, I don't have any. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm waiting to hear back on a couple, and uh, I'm going to go talk to Sheriff Farmer to try and get his endorsement um, this week. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not something I've been pursuing. It, yeah. Um, I, I met with Sheriff Farmer at the fireworks down at, on the second, down at the county fairgrounds. Okay. And, uh, it was a little noisy to try and talk. A little but, bit noisy. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to endorse me. Oh, so, well, that's good. Yeah. So there's really not much to talk about with endorsements. Okay. Are you willing to talk about the the race on the ballot between Webster and Luma? Wow. You know, no matter which way I flip the coin, I, I come up a loser on that one. I, I mean, I like Congressman Webster, mm-hmm. but... Uh, so do I. You know, he's I mean, he's a nice guy. He's done a few things for us. Well, yeah. And and Laura Loomer is pretty much an activist. She she seems to think that shaking the trees and, and upsetting people is the only way to, to make things work. And she's not going to be well-received in Washington. So I don't think she's a good choice. But I believe it's time, though, for Congressman Webster to retire. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's not an easy choice. Mm-hmm. Luma has uh, won some in- endorsements. She has. But she is too much of an activist, I think, for Sumter County. Oh, for Congress, period. She she will be our version of AOC. She will be the Republican version of AOC and, and that hit squad. And yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's a good place for the Republican Party. Well, I, I think that means that she's going to be given tasks in Congress where she's going to get nothing done. At least Webster has done a little bit for us. Yeah. And it does have tenure. Yeah. Okay. How do you tr- how does a a voter decide who to trust as their candidate to vote for? Wow. How do you how do you know how to trust somebody you really don't know? That's, I guess the, the the easiest thing is uh, ask yourself what have have they been doing for me and and what are they going to do for me both in the past and in the future? Mm-hmm. You know, myself, I moved to the villages eight years ago. I immediately went into the District 10 board, becoming a CD, CD supervisor and, and on the Project White Advisory Committee. That's what I've been doing for 10 years. So you've got the experience. I've got the experience. You know, my opponent, uh, he was on a city council or county commission, I don't remember, something up in Michigan, again, as a Democrat. But and That what, was Michigan, not the villages. That's correct. You know, what's he done since since he's been here? I know he plays a lot of softball. I'm not here to play softball. I'm here to play hardball. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all, you know, all with drones. Yeah, well, you know, the drone is the drone is fun. It's it's my business, uh, and I enjoy that. I, I think you've done a heck of a good job at illustrating the gro- <laughs> the growth of the villages using the drones. Oh. I know I've enjoyed watching the 114 episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a few, actually. Since I've taken this position as county commissioner, I've been spending a lot more time outside of the villages looking around. So in future videos, you're going to see more of what's going on in the county. I, I was just out at Lake Panasofsky. Yeah, Panasoft. I, I can't get these names. That, that Some, seems close. Uh, pa- Lake, Lake Panasofsky. Pan. Lake Pan is Lake Pan. how most people call it. I was out there for, for lunch today at uh, one of the local restaurants, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was right on the lake. So I think these are some of the things I'm going to start highlighting in my videos. Maybe get some of the residents to, to get out of the bubble, mm-hmm. to get to know the local community. Yeah, which restaurant was it? Not <sighs> Catfish Johnny's, was it? No, I, w- I was at Catfish Johnny's about two months ago. Okay. You know, 
Oh, I remember. I had good catfish. Oh, well, <laughs> you have to let me know. We can, the Mercedes Club has had yeah. a couple of th- things where we drove down to Lake Panasofsky and had lunch or something. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember what the name was off the top of my head. Now, before I walked in the room here, I knew it. But you know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Old age. Um, but back to back to who do you trust? You know, that's, that, that is a tough one. You know, I mean, besides being a CDD supervisor, you know, I, I care about the community I live in. You know, this past year, uh, we did uh, Thanksgiving dinner for the firefighters. In past years, it was just for Station 45. This this In this past year, we did it for all of all of the fire stations here in the villages, mm-hmm. and we provided a Thanksgiving, a traditional Thanksgiving dinner for all of them. It was the help of about a hundred residents, maybe a few more, uh, to to prepare dinner for all ten fire stations. Plus, we also uh, collected a bunch of cash and we donated a thousand dollars to their relief fund. Good. What is your position on the vote for the independent? Uh, fire district isn't that going to be on the ballot this time the, the independent fire district is going to be on the ballot yes and that's that's a really important thing as far as you know, well first off we have to make sure we understand there's two separate issues that people kind of combine together the ambulance issue is resolved okay the ambulances are being moved into the fire stations they're going to be manned by our firefighters that's that's a done issue that was resolved last year that's for both Sumter County and the villages. That is correct. Each each fire station will have an ambulance. Each fire station will have an ambulance instead of there being a pool that can vary in size depending on the, the time of day and day of the week because the previous the pe- previous people contracted AMR are for a for-profit business. Sure. Uh, so th- they have to manage their cost. Now we're looking at reducing response time. Much, very much so. And, you know, it gives us the advantage, too, of if there's two or three ambulances out on a call, they can move them around to a different fire station to more centrally locate it if they know it's going to be an extended period of time. So I, I think we're definitely going to see an improvement in our response times, both within the villages and outside of Sumter County. So that's half the issue. The fire, inside the, Sumter County. The rest of Sumter County. Yeah, yeah. inside Sumter County. Uh, Someone might be listening. Yeah, somebody. So with the independent fire district, that's a different thing. Now, but, now, the fire district is the only thing on the ballot. Correct. The ambulance is already resolved. That's done. That's done. The The county commissioners saw to that last year. So, the fire districts. Uh, we're looking at two independent fire districts. Right now, about 29, yeah, right, right around $29 million out of the county's budget goes to the two fire departments. Mm-hmm. About uh, 16 and a half to the villages. And I think it's about $12 million to the county fire departments to staff and maintain them. So that $29 million comes out of the county budget. That comes out of the general fund. The general fund. Now, part of what funds that general fund mm-hmm. is the ad valorem taxes, our, our property taxes. Another part of it is the, main, the annual fee on your property tax bill of $124. So It's like a, a roof fee? Basically, any any improved protect, protect any, this parcel of land. Any improved parcel has to pay uh, the one hundred twenty four dollars. So that represents about eight point six million dollars that goes towards that twenty nine million. So what's going to happen is we're going to move forward with an independent assessment of the cost for both fire services and transportation services to figure out what it's really going to cost. It's an independent auditor that comes in and does this. It's, it's actually in the county budget for the coming year to, to hire this, this out. They'll determine the exact costs, and they, that should give us a number that we can take off of the ad valorem tax. Okay? The 124 is going to stay, so we're looking at, let's, let's call it $21 million, should come off of our county property taxes. And that money will go, well, it will be taxed that, that, to the fire department. Well, no. That's going to be a reduction mm-hmm. in the millage rate. Right. Okay. Then there will be a new tax. Okay. In Sumter County, they'll, we're going to worry just about Sumter County. In the villages, this is all assuming, of course, it passes. Uh, they have 
they have now the ability to tax uh, the properties for this independent fire district. And I believe it can be up to one millage point, which is $1 per thousand, I think it is. Since there are some of the villages that are in Lake County or Marion This is County. just the Sumter County section. Just the Sumter it's County. It's just Sumter County. This so. only affects Sumter County. We still, we still have uh, agreements, mutual service agreements, between Lake County and Marion County and Sumter County for, for providing services. But the Independent Fire District is just within Sumter County. So if someone had a home in Lake County, they would be serviced by the Lake County Fire Department today and then in the future. Their, their service would not change. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that's because of the, the, the intergovernment agreements. That, okay. That so I, I didn't understand that so, point. So basically, we're gonna, what should happen is we reduce the property tax and then they create a new tax that basically replaces what they just took away. And in, if you live in the villages, it's going to be one value. If, it, if you live in, the, in Sumter County, outside of the villages, there will be a different tax on your property tax bill. And this way, the villages who want and desire a higher level of service, whether it be smoke alarms or you know, all the different extra services that our fire department provides, the AED uh, support and all that, that cost will be borne strictly by the village's residents and not by the county residents. So it's, it's your expectation that the net cost to an individual homeowner in the villages because of the fi new fire district, if it passes, would be about the same, go up or go down? You know, until we get the actual results of the study, it's, it's difficult to say. Just the rough numbers I've run, we should see in the villages, it should stay the same, might even decrease a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just because so much of our population or so much of the county's population is within the villages. You know, you've got a very similar dollar amount, 12 million and, and uh, 16 and a half million. Uh, so it seems like pretty, pretty close numbers. The, by and large, the majority of the homes and properties are within the confines of the villages. So that higher amount is divided up amongst a lot more properties. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think uh, if you live in the villages, you, you might actually see a decrease. It, it's yet to be seen. You know, district staff has to work all that out yet. Mm -hmm. So everyone in the county, both some uh, villages residents and Sumter County residents outside the villages, uh, if they vote yes for the fire district, no one knows exactly what it's going to cost them or say. That, that's correct. Yeah. And until, until we do this study, okay, this assessment uh, to, to, to figure out exactly what the costs are, are going to be, then it's, it, it, it's impossible to say. One of the things to keep in mind with these ambulances, with having more ambulances, they're there 24-7. Mm-hmm. They have to be maintained, mm -hmm. whereas under AMR, they maintained a fleet, uh, but they weren't always all active. Sometimes they were just parked in, in a parking lot. Uh, I think it was down in Bushnell um, when they weren't in use. Mm -hmm. uh, but because we're maintaining a, a much larger fleet between the two fire departments, <clears throat> excuse me, between the two fire departments, there'll be about two dozen ambulances. There'll be more equipment and yes. manpower yes. to handle the calls. Correct. So that's that going to that's going to become an extra an extra cost. How do you how do you determine is it worth that extra cost? The best thing I can tell you is when you let your loved one's hand go as they put them in the ambulance and they take them off to their, to the hospital, that's when you can answer that question and only then. Because to stand here right now and say is it worth it to me? Uh, I don't know. I think it is. But until you're on the receiving end of those services, it doesn't. It, it's hard to justify the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a couple of uh, cases. What when I was a good friend of a fellow who, who came to take to the hospital, yeah, and he had a heart attack and he didn't make it. And uh, I just heard of another case where they picked up a pickleball player. Each mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's the reality of where we of the community that we live in. Well, it's a reality of our ages. Yes, but it's it's also a reality of how long it takes to get someone into care. Yes, the quicker you do it, whether they say it's the golden sixty minutes after an attack, they got to get them into the emergency room. You can't you can't take fifteen or twenty minutes yeah. to get an ambulance to them. Right. I mean, so you know, in the villages, we're looking at a four to six minute response time to get an ambulance just about anywhere in the villages. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's a pretty good response time. It's a little longer out in the county, but it's more spread out. It's much more rural, so it's a longer drive. There's not as many fire stations per square mile as there are here in the villages, but that's because there's not as many houses. I'll bet that we stack up extremely well compared to most major cities in America. Oh, oh definitely we do. You know, part of it is to our amenity fee, mm-hmm. $4.08 every month from every amenity fee goes to supplement the fire department, public safety department. Well, Most people that. didn't realize that. Uh, that represents about three and a half million dollars a year that out of our amenity fees goes to fund the village's fire department. And that's part of what pays for the, the smoke detector change outs and, and all the other extra services that uh, our firefighters do for us. Yeah, i I found that to be quite amazing when I moved down here that the fire department would come out and swap out your batteries. Well, it was, smoke e- detector. It, was either, it was easier to do that than pick you up off the ground after falling off a ladder. Yeah, and, and breaking a bone. Uh, I completely understand that. I think that's a wonderful uh, thing that we have here in, in Sumter County. Well, Don, in, in summary, why don't you remind uh, our listeners about why they should vote for you? Well, because I'm the best candidate. No. Uh, of course, I think that. Um, you seem to have the most experience here in the villages. Yeah. You know, again, I, I make my decisions based on facts. I try not to let emotion run run the course. I am, again, I have some experience. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I do my homework before I, I try and uh, make a decision or say something. I have been true to my party. I have been a Republican all my life. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to flip-flop every time you turn around. Again, we saw how that worked out for us this last time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll admit it, when I was growing up, I was a Democrat, and it wasn't until I got a lot older and owned my own business that I recognized that, that I had to change. Yeah. Well, Democrat or Republican, independent, whatever. Everyone should vote. Yeah. Is it still possible to get a mail-in ballot if yes. someone wants it? Yes, What's it is. the deadline for that? I knew you were going to ask that, and I, I knew that when I walked out of my house. Um, <laughs> I think you have another... Two weeks. Okay. And then early voting starts, what, August 9th? Yes, I believe that's when it is, yes. Okay. And they can go into the re- one of the regional rec centers, the big ones. Like yeah. Uh, like they, that, that list will be promulgated shortly. The, there was a whole supervisor of elections has been very busy the last couple of weeks because of the redistricting mm-hmm. that's been going on. So once they, I think they've got the redistricting settled now and they're just trying to get all the the, the polling places identified and uh, the ballots properly marked and, and making sure that you vote for the right person and I vote for the right person because that's who represents us. Right. And does it make a difference if someone goes in in person and votes or votes by mail? No, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, I, I will tell you that uh, Mr. Keene, our supervisor of elections, he and his staff do an incredible job. Uh, two years or four years ago, when I was running for District 10, and there was a recount, I watched them go through their procedures. I operated a nuclear reactor for 20 years. Mm-hmm. We, we were pretty anal about our uh, procedures, our, our procedures, and our paperwork and all this. We look like rank amateurs compared to the supervisor of elections here in, in Sumter County. This guy is one of the best in the state, and so I, I think it's good. I think. We're going to have a good election, and uh, I'm not worried about the count. Good. I'm I'm recommending that everyone vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for, but it would be nice if they voted for Don. (laughs) Yeah, it would be. But again, you know, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or an independent, just be true to yourself. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, vote for the person you think is going to do the best job. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in this election, because for county commissioner, all the candidates are Republicans. Everybody can vote for all the candidates, right? And Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, even though this, even though this is the primary, this will actually determine the outcome of the general election for the county commissioner. So, 
let's pretend you win the, the election in August, the, the primary. Is your name going to be on the ballot again in November? No. No. Once, once the primary is over, the county commission seats are settled. They won't be on the general. They won't be on the, the general ballot Good. in that, November. That'll make the, those ballots a lot easier for people to yes, handle. Yes, it will. But Don, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you having me. Great. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Remember, our next episode will air live next Friday at 9 a.m. Or should I say pre-recorded? But that's when it will be released on our regular subscriptions. Bonus subscribers can get early access to episodes. Should you want to become a sponsor of the show, contact me at Mike Roth at rothvoice.com. If you know someone that you think should be on the show, send me an email at mike at rothvoice.com. I want to thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyright by Roth Voice 2022, all rights reserved.